Hello everyone, in this video we're going to make static hair dynamic. We'll be using Puppet 3D and Dynamic Bone in order to achieve this. Before we start I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So here we are in a project and in this scene all I imported is some hair from a Sinti Polygon hair pack and that's it. There's nothing else um, in the scene itself. So this mesh um, is completely static so it doesn't have a rig, um, has no collider or anything like that and what we're going to do is we're going to make this hair um, move so basically make the ponytail move. Now obviously you can make a lot of other things move as well. Uh, you don't necessarily need uh, Sinti polygon uh, hair meshes, you know any hair mesh will just do fine um, but this is what I'm using for my project. So first things first, um, you need to make sure that Puppet 3D and Dynamic Bone are installed. For those thinking I can do this in Blender, um, well then this video is just not for you, but that's perfect. Uh, for those who do not use Blender like me, um, Puppet 3D is an amazing and easy solution. So let's get started. First things first, we need a collider and I'm going to add a mesh collider here, um, keep it pretty simple. Uh, this is needed in order for, Dyna uh, for Puppet 3D to um, attach the bones. Um, later this can be turned off, so no, you don't need it afterwards, but it is needed in order to set up the rig. So this is the Puppet uh, 3D um, window, uh, fairly simple. Now we're not rigging a character here, so we'll be using Skeleton in order to uh, rig this hair. And the way we go about this is I make sure that I'm in a perspective mode, just makes things slightly easier, and we're going to use the Create Bone tool. Now there's a Spline tool as well, but that adds an insane amount of bones, um, which is simply not needed, uh, in my opinion. If you want to use that, go ahead. Um, I'm going to keep it a bit more simple. Now, first things first, I'm going to do something that might seem a bit odd, but I'm going to start here actually, and no, I won't be animating this, um, but it's in order to make sure that those parts of the mesh don't actually move along with uh, the ponytail. Then we get here. Now, this is the point where I'll be uh, making the attachment, hence the shape, and then, yeah, something like this. Seems about right. So then I'm going to press finish bone. And we have this shape. Um, it's not completely straight or exactly in the middle, but it doesn't have to be. So perfect. Then we press finish bone. So now all of the bones are here and we'll be attaching that to the mesh in a bit. And I'll be locating the bone that I want to use, um, which is going to be yeah this one I think yeah let's use this one so I'm going to go back to the inspector um, and I'm going to uh, add the dynamic bone script and drag in the bone itself so no it doesn't have to be here I just think it's easier and before we start anything we need to take the next step and we'll be tweaking the dynamic bone settings in a bit so first things first, we're going to select all of the bones and yeah, literally let me pull this out a bit. So quite a lot of bones already. Going to select all of these bones and we're going to select the mesh as well. Then we'll go back to Puppet 3D and we go to skinning. So there's a couple of options here. So we have um, bind smooth skin and we have skinning points. So you can use voxel or close point. Uh, voxel gave me slightly better results. I'm not going to pretend I know why. That's just from my experience. Um, but obviously I'd advise to you know, check out all of the settings. So that's it. Then we're going to press bind smooth skin. And they're attached. So in order to test this out, let's make sure all of these are actually uh, oh, childs of the mesh itself. There we go. And I'm going to hit play. So 
So right now we have our object, so I'm going to select the object. Let me turn off Gizmos. And as you can see, it's acting, uh, you know, really spastic, but at least we know it's working. Um, so that's good. It's moving exactly the way it should. Now let's just adjust for those movements a bit, because obviously this is a bit too, uh, bit too spastic. Um, when it comes to the, um, you know, the settings you will be using for dynamic bone, that's completely up to you. I will show you the settings I played around with a bit that worked for me. Um, but you know, I'll, uh, I'll advise to try something else for yourself if you uh, don't like the way this looks. So I'll simply be entering those values and then um, show you what it looks like. But if you don't like it, again, just tweak it to whatever you prefer. So not all that much has changed. I'm going to save and let's hit play again. And let's try this out one more time. So now if I drag this along, you'll see uh, slightly better behavior. You can even turn on the lighting here. So yeah, the behavior will be slightly better, uh, slightly more realistic as to how it should be behaving. Uh, not saying this is perfect, but uh, this works for me and I'm pretty satisfied with the way it looks. Now Puppet 3D can be used for anything really. Um, there's not really any limits, so you can use it for rope, clothes, etc. I'll, uh, I'll see if there's a model I have for a rope. I'm not really sure I have one. And it seems like I do. So perfect. So yeah, this is rope. I'm <laughs> pretty straightforward and simple. I'll uh, unpack this prefab. Now uh, I'll only use the, the top part. So the actual straight rope. Let me turn off the here. We can get rid of this one as well. So let's try that again. So we need a mesh uh, collider again to in order to set this up. So it's going to be uh, obviously really simple. Let's change our perspective again. Oh, and let's go to create bone tool. Would help if gizmos were turned on. So as you can see, this is pretty simple. You you know, if you want it to be uh, even better, just add a lot more. In this case, you could actually use the spline tool to uh, add a lot more at the same time. But this is uh, this is fine for now. Then let's finish this. Let's grab all of those bones again. The actual mesh. Let's go to skinning. We do it again. Now I'll be dragging this under the model itself. Let me get rid of this. And this time I'll just um, place the script on it directly. I'm going to copy it over. So yes, it will have the same settings, but that's okay. And we just need to drag in the correct bone this time. And there we go. So let's have a look at how this behaves. I haven't tried out a rope yet, so this will be fun. Let's go to the scene view. I'm going to turn off gizmos again. And yeah, this is not, you know, all that amazing compared to uh, compared to the other one, but it does move. It's a uh, it's a bit too static maybe for uh, for a rope, but that's okay. At least it's moves exactly like we wanted to. So that's really how easy it is to set all of this up. Now you can do this for clothes as well. If you use um, fantasy packs, you can use this for capes. 
um, it's really uh, that simple to set all of this up now I know there's different tools that can allow you to rig as well um, but for someone like me who is not a modeler this is just so incredibly easy to use Puppet 3D and as you can see with literally just a couple of clicks you can basically um, well basically rig everything and animate everything as well so really cool i uh, hope this was useful thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one